Hi everybody, well I'm not able to get out on a hike at the moment, still haven't had the all clear from the hospital, but I am going to talk to you a little bit today about camping gear, particularly cooking gear. Now first of all, before we get into what we're going to take when we're going hiking or what we're going to cook with when we're doing different types of camping, let's first of all take a look at some of the different types of camping. The first bit of camping I ever did, so basically car camping. When I first passed my test as a youngster, my world suddenly got massive. Put the seats down in the car, throw a sleeping bag and a, and a bit of foam in, something to cook on, and, uh, and that was it. Next we got solo base camping. And that's basically where you've still got your car, but you take a tent with you, and then head off into the hills, come back and you've got somewhere all set up, ready to go. Then when your world changes, you end up doing family tenting. Well, same sort of thing, mainly base camping, but obviously with a much bigger tent, and you take everything, big cookers, big kettles, including kitchen sink, if you can fit it in. But the kids loved it. Then you've got trailer tent camping. Well, that's a sort of a step up, whereas, especially with the family, you've got that beauty of having the canvas still over your head, but you're off the floor, um, it's easier to pull around, there's more space, um, you've still got a, a sink that works, and comforts, which are pretty much home from home. There's caravanning. When you're with the family, that's like luxury. You're a bit spoiled, let's face it. And then eventually, the kids grow up, they leave home, or not really interested anymore. The wife, well, she's either glad to get you out of the house for a, a while and let you go off on your own, or in my case, she leaves. But you then can get out and do your hiking in the spring, health permitting, of course. We're going to end up doing some wild camping and getting out. So let's just take a look at all the kit that we've got and see what we need. Okay, so let's start. Let's see what we can get rid of. It's obvious. Now, believe it or not, this old wood burner, a couple of washing machine drums, fantastic for in the garden, whatever. And yes, I have actually taken it away with me before, but obviously that's out of the question. Now, if I'm going on my own, I don't need a kettle. This old trusty kitty, this is fantastic. If you're doing base camping with a family, something like this is absolutely ideal. But we're not gonna be entertaining that. Now, if anybody's ever used these, these were the, the next thing that everybody went mad about. It takes these uh, style bottles. They're much easier than the, than the big cooker. And they come in these, uh, little plastic boxes over there like so turn on, turn them over out the way, close him up and away you go but far too big, far too heavy now we're going back in time look at that a <laughs> really old camping stove there holds up sort of like that and like that Still far too big. The bird's got a lot to say, but that's out of the question. Then we've got this kitty, hardly used, look at that. This has been around for some time. These old canisters, they're the push type. They haven't got a thread on them, you push and turn. Not really ideal, I think, for, for this for modern camping. Now this is a little bit more modern. Now, you may look at this one and think, what the hell is that? Now that's a bit big. And those you know, it's a BioLite. Now this is a little bit special. This kitty here, this kitty here comes off of there. He sits in there and he sits in a bag. But it does take up quite a lot of space and it's quite heavy. However, if you're a gadget person, this has got a little feature on it which is a bit special. That bio strip on the inside there will heat up in the flames. And inside here you have a lithium battery because when you actually put your tin and stuff in there and start your fire, you press the button on the front and it starts a small fan. The fan then blows into the bottom of the framework here, which is sleeved, and it really kicks up some heat. You do have to feed it quite a lot of twigs and whatever to keep it going. Now what it's actually doing whilst you're cooking your food, it's actually heating up that strip inside there, and it's actually recharging the battery. You can then open that up, plug in your telephone, 
for any of your gadgets and you can actually recharge your kit off of this whilst you're cooking. We have this, it's a Odderland I think, something I bought off of Amazon. I bought it because it had the adapter with it so you can you can unscrew this and you can attach this to either these type of canisters or with this adapter you can fit it to these type of uh, gas cans. Good thing is it's nice, it's low down to the ground, it's stable and it does fold away quite nicely. These fold down under here. It does also have a starter on this one, that there, and it will just sit nicely in there with the adapter as well. A pretty compact little piece of kit. I think my favourite has got to be my little Etna. This was, I think I purchased this one from Go Outdoors. It is nice and stable. I'm just going to use my S bit on top here. Um, it's also got a, use that as a lid, smaller pot, cup. It's very versatile. It's, I mean, it's still pretty stable. If you've got the bigger pot on it, it works absolutely fine. The thing I do love about this one is with my S bit, and this is totally by chance, you fold this down, this folds down nicely and it sits perfect. My gas canister, I've got the hole in the middle there so it's quite safe. It goes upside down. I also pop in my little starter in there, the edge. This has his own little bag just to protect him. He sits nicely on top. And this sits perfectly in this little pot. And that is everything I need for cooking. There is other options as well, of course. If I don't want to use gas, the Esbit initially came with these little bits in here. You can drop that in there. Got some little grooves that it sits in. You use either a, a block, even a tea light, if you've got plenty of them. The other thing, of course, that fits perfectly in here is the Trangier. And this on the top there is for reducing the flame, simmering and so on, and obviously extinguishing the flame. That sits perfectly in there. There is a, a wider opening on, on here. So when you're using the train here in there, you can actually adjust this and put the flame out or go for a simmer. And that will sit on there. Have your lid on. And again, perfect setup. So I think it's either going to be the Trangier or the gas. I think that's going to be something which I pretty much decide on the day. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to boil the same quantity of water with each one of these and get a feel of how long it's going to take to actually boil each one. So we shall uh, we'll put a timer on. Now what I'll do, I'll fire up each one, we'll put it on, we'll give it a timer and then we'll We'll see what gives us the best results. We'll start off with the Tangier. There we are. That's all it took. Okay, we're well sitting in there nicely. Just let that warm up a little bit. Just start him off. Okay, we'll have so amount of each one. Get our lid ready. And we'll pop him on. Start the timer. Well, it's taken four minutes and 55 to five minutes so far. We've got some bubbles on the bottom and a little bit of steam there, so we're getting that. And here's something bubbling there just now. We're steaming, but we're not quite bubbling. I've just got to say that the outside temperature here at the minute is about nine degrees, so. It's um, it's taken what seven and a half minutes. We've got boiling water. Lovely job. Got a big flame there. Look at that. We can just cap him off. I'll oh, switch a little bit of cold in there first. Bring the temperature of the pot down. That's it. And the pot's now. Pot's now cold. <laughs> I 
So what are we at? We have seven and a half minutes. And start the clock. Obviously a bit windy. You can get the tall shields to go around, which I think is something which I'm going to have to get for when I venture out. You can see some small bubbles on the bottom of the pot already. And we're at... Uh, 150, 1 minute 50 seconds and that is boiling away that is vigorously boiling, boiling. lovely job, look at that now that was just over 2 minutes ok so that's nice and cool again the same amount again now in theory using gas this should be somewhere near the same If you can get it started, fail. And it's getting it, keeping it standing up, especially when you're out in the wild. Uh, if you if you do, if you knock it down, it suddenly goes wild, it's just uncontrollable. So you can't have that on its side. Probably be better with this type of canister. But anyway, we'll see how we go. Let's reset that timer again. Okay, it's got a bigger base, a bigger ring on him to actually, and more flame on this one, so it may be a bit quicker. Okay, well we checked it one and a half before. Let's have a look. Yeah, we've got some bubbles on the bottom. Again, I think it's working pretty much the same. As the uh, as the Edna, and there we are again. We've just come up to two minutes, almost there. Two minutes ten, and he's bubbling away. I think this would be more ideal if we're out cooking and we're using the pans. But I think for a bit of wild camping, it's got to be good old Etna. That's fine. So I think that's probably about it. Now we have got the BioLite. I mean this kid is a completely different animal so I'm going to keep this one I think for for when I decide to go out further afield maybe um, because it's got the capability of recharging if I'm going out just for one or two nights I think this is going to be the type of kit that I take um, because I have got battery chargers and whatever to recharge um, on my phone and camera gear and whatever so but I'm quite happy with this at the moment this little video has just been me playing with my cooking kit, deciding on what I really like and what I want to take, what's going to work best for me uh, when I go out and do my first ever wild camp. So health permitting, uh, this spring, um, we'll be getting out there. I think next week we need to try and get out and stretch our legs and, and uh, concentrate again on the health. So I'll see you out there.